Let me show you how to do this super easy, natural, everyday makeup look. When it comes to developing your signature makeup look, the first step is figuring out what your skin concerns are. Because I can tell you that makeup is meant to enhance your look. And if there's something that you're trying to hide, it's most likely gonna amplify it. If you are somebody like myself who has hyperpigmentation, dark marks, dark under eyes, dark areas around your lip, something that you can start off with is a good color corrector. I got this color corrector a while ago from the brand Live Tinted and they actually have on their website a little quiz that you can take to determine what color specifically you need to use in a color corrector. And then from there I'm gonna blend it out just a little bit because I'm gonna add foundation on top. Now when it comes to foundation just as I mentioned before you have to figure out what look you're going for because there are so many different types of foundation. Personally I like a dewy finish. I like a medium coverage foundation that gives a very skin like appearance and for years I've been using the MAC Studio Fix Fluid Foundation. Now, before I go in with my foundation, I'm gonna make sure that I get these brows together because they're looking a little bit crazy right now. I always like to use a brow setting gel. And this one by Benefit Cosmetics has literally been my go-to for like a year now. And the thing about like a brow setting gel that I love is the fact that on days where I don't wanna wear any makeup, I just do my brows with this. I like to set my brows, make sure that I brush my brow hair is up and from there I can sculpt it into the way that I'd like it to look. When your brows look good, the rest of your face looks good. Once your brows are laid, this is where I would suggest going in with some type of brow pencil to help to really refine and fill in your brows. Personally, I like, again, a natural fluffy look. So I don't generally do a brow pencil on a regular basis. But if you are someone who wants a little bit more fullness in your brows, when you're getting a brow pencil, unless your hair is jet black, I would always suggest getting a soft brown or a warm brown brow pencil. This is the High Def Brow Pencil by Revitalash Cosmetics. And you're literally going to draw hair-like strokes in the areas where you feel like there's a little bit of gapping. Now I'm gonna go in with my foundation. Don't judge me, I meant to clean my brushes before this video, but the way my time is set up. So this is a foundation brush and it's gonna be flat on the end. I would suggest if you have just started out with using foundation and putting your makeup on, I would use a brush and a sponge. If you're gonna use a makeup sponge, make sure that it's damp. So just run it under some water, squeeze it out a few times. I generally like to take like uh, maybe my towel and squeeze it out a little bit so it's not dripping wet. And the reason you want it damp is so that it helps the product to actually move around and it's not just gonna sit in one place on the sponge. I am just going to rub it like this and it's like a somewhat circular motion. I'm basically just distributing the foundation on my face. Make sure that whenever you're putting on foundation that you're getting into your hairline. I know it's annoying, but you don't want it to look super obvious that your makeup ends at a certain point. We're gonna go on with the sponge just to make sure it's a little bit refined, and this is also for anyone who's just beginning and wants to make sure that your makeup looks really, really even. Now, as you can see, I didn't put any foundation on my eye lids and that's because I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of eyeshadow. I know that this is supposed to be an easy everyday makeup look and I promise you that this is going to be easy. So the first thing that I'm gonna do before I put any eyeshadow onto my eyelid, I'm gonna use an eyeshadow primer. My favorite one is the Lock and Grip by Makeup Revolution. So it's just like a clear eyeshadow primer that I just distribute onto my eyelid. This is gonna help to make sure that as the day goes on, my eyeshadow is not creasing. So as I let this dry down a little bit on my face, I'm now gonna go in with concealer. Concealer that I like to use is Goat of All Concealers. It's the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And my particular color that I like to use is Amand. And Amand is gonna be a little bit lighter than my actual complexion. Now, the reason that I like a lighter concealer under my eyes is it's gonna give that refreshed, glowy look. So I like to put it under my eye like this. This is the old school way of putting it on. I know the TikTok girlies just put like two little dots here, two little dots here, but 
This is the way I like to do it. I'm gonna keep doing it this way. You wanna put it wherever you know that you want the light to hit and you wanna add a little bit of brightness or a bit of a glow. Now that my eyeshadow primer is pretty dry after putting my concealer on, I'm gonna go over my eyes with just a neutral brown eyeshadow. This is a great way to elevate your everyday look. It's not too bright, but it shows that you put a little bit of effort into it. All right, and as you can see, the brown shadow is on and the palette that I'm using for this eyeshadow is an older, a slightly older palette. I got it last year from Makeup Revolution. Ultimate Desire Palette and it's called Into the Bronze. And this is the color that I'm using right here. As you can see, I use it pretty much every day. It's like almost done. Now that we have our eyeshadow on and our concealer has sat for a little bit, we can blend it out. I personally like to make sure that my concealer has dried down a little bit and this is going to help with increasing the coverage, making sure that there aren't any of those under eye creases and it really snatches that under eye area. Now after the concealer is all done I'm gonna go in with the most important part of makeup application or at least in my opinion and that is setting my concealer. This is gonna help to make sure that your makeup looks more refined, more snatched and actually lasts throughout the day. Laura Mercier setting powder. It's a translucent setting powder and I like to use it in the color honey. Little press pads that I got on Amazon and this is gonna make the application a little bit easier. So I just put my two fingers in here and then I'm gonna bring it down here, knocking off the residue. You're gonna press into the skin. This is gonna help you to really set the makeup. And so I'm gonna go in and just add a little bit at a time. Go in small doses. Use a little bit at a time and build your way up. So now this is a good time for you to go and iron your clothes, brush your teeth, grab a little snack. <laughs> because you wanna have the setting powder actually set. This is a process people call baking. All right, and once you've had it set for a bit, you're then gonna go in, you're gonna press in, you're gonna press it in and bring it up. Okay, now we're gonna add a little bit of color back to our face because I'm, I'm giving ghost, I'm giving snatch, but I'm giving ghost. <laughs> so I'm gonna put on some blush. Lately, I've been using a cream blush and the cream blush that I've been using, the Fenty Cream Blush in the color Raisin Standards. Apply it with your finger if you want. I personally like to use the back of my sponge, so I'll take it, twist it on like so, and then I'm just gonna start from here. I like, look at that. That was a tiny tap, like a very tiny tap, and you can already see it. So this is why you take your time when you're applying blush and just go a little bit, and it's very gentle. And I like to go in an upward motion like this. And again, we're gonna go into the hairline because we don't want it to just stop. Personally, I go through phases when it comes to eyeliner, and right now I'm in one of those phases where I'm wearing it all the time whenever I do my makeup. And my favorite eyeliner is the Revitalash Cosmetics Defining Liner. I'm just gonna go with my waterline right here on the inside. Um, if you wear contacts, this is probably a lot easier for you than someone who does not wear contacts. If you're somebody who doesn't wear contacts and you blink a lot and freak out whenever your eye is touched, just skip it. You don't have to wear eyeliner, it's all right. We're gonna go in with mascara and that's gonna give the look as well. I generally wear individual lash extensions um, and I have a few left right now, but I actually need a fill. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go in with some mascara today. The mascara that I've been using and loving lately is the YSL Lash Clash Mascara. Okay, so when I apply mascara, because I'm not doing the most, I go from underneath as opposed to wringing it from the top because that to me, from my, from my experience, has led to a lot of clumping. So I'm just gonna go from underneath. The thing about mascara is it takes building it up. You don't just go in with a ton of mascara. You wanna gently build it up to the look and fullness that you prefer. So I generally like to add a little bit more to the end to give that like open eye look. You can already see a difference between both eyes. Also going from underneath is helpful in making sure that you don't get any on your eyelid. And don't forget adding mascara to your bottom lashes as well. Just a little bit. Make sure you open your eyes as wide as you can and just add just a tiny bit. I don't dip again before I do this. That way there's not too much excess mascara and it doesn't get 
on my face. Lately, what I've been doing when it comes to my glosses is using a brown lip liner. For me, the best brown lip liner that I've used is the Anastasia Beverly Hills lip liner, and this is in the color Malt. I absolutely love this lip liner. And the reason I use a brown lip liner, no matter what color gloss I'm using, <laughs> is because it really helps give a more natural look and finish, especially if I'm gonna be using a lighter color gloss and I have darker skin. So the gloss that I'm gonna be using is this really pretty light nude gloss by Pat McGrath. And generally in the past, I would have never ever touched a lip gloss this light before. But because of the fact that I'm using brown lip liner, it helps it to blend more seamlessly. This is the Pat McGrath Lust Lip Gloss in the color Nude Venus. And I'm just gonna add it right here. And then what I'm gonna do, I've added it to the bottom. I'm gonna gently tap my lips together. We're gonna go a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. And voila, that is the final look. And I get it, when it comes to putting together your signature makeup look, it can seem daunting and there are so many different steps. But when you break down each element and do what you know is gonna enhance your natural beauty and your natural look, I promise you, it's not as bad as it seems.